Well, it's 2.01, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to kick off our Tuesday at 2 event today. And um, for those that don't know, Tuesdays at 2 are a way for the Green Chamber to have a weekly meeting. It's very quick. It's only 30 minutes. And we highlight a local speaker or a local topic that the Green Chamber thinks is of interest. So we come across lots of very cool, uh, interesting topics, and it's our way of taking our platform and sharing it with the community. Uh, so that is how our Tuesday at Two was created. And for those people who are on um, that don't know who the Green Chamber is, we are the North Florida Green Chamber. We're a chamber of commerce, and it's our mission to make it cool and convenient to be green. And what that really means is it's, we feel that it's our job to help make being green cool or value. So we want both the community, um, our elected officials, we want customers, clients, um, and businesses to all value a green, sustainable, resilient choice that the business community is making. So that should be something that we all celebrate and value. So our programs are geared towards making, uh, making it really cool when people are making green choices. It's also our job to make it convenient because if it's not convenient or easy, a lot of people won't do it. So our programs are geared towards making it either less expensive or cost efficient for businesses to make sustainable choices um, or making it easier, whether it's providing uh, local resources, uh, whether it's providing tool kits um, or programs or just easy access to things. Uh, we feel that that's part of our mission is to make it cool and convenient uh, to be green. So today's Tuesday at two, we're gonna get started. There are some rules since this is a very quick meeting. Uh, please everybody mute your microphones. Um, also know that you're being recorded, so say hi. If um, you have any questions about being recorded, please let me know. We are gonna put this on our YouTube channel, which we have launched and uh, you can get that link on our website. Um, you can check out future or past Tuesdays at two uh, and our past events that we've had. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, just um, either shoot me a, a chat or email me. Um, we are going to do a quick little icebreaker today. Part of the mission of the Green Chamber is to connect people in the community. And we see our Tuesdays at two as a way to connect uh, or help our members or uh, people in the community that have, have an interest in a similar topic uh, to connect with each other. So you may see somebody on here that you know um, or somebody on here that you don't know that you want to connect with later. And then we're going to hand it over to our speaker. Uh, and he, our speaker will have a few minutes to discuss a topic, kind of uh, pique your interest. And then at the end, we will have a discussion. Um, and that's, a, that's your chance for asking questions. So please no questions until the end. Um, we promise we will make some time for that. So with that, we're going to jump into our icebreaker. And hold on one second here. We've got people in the waiting room. So um, we have our icebreaker, which is a way for us to uh, connect. So if everybody could please put your name into the chat box, including you, Pete, if you could, and include any, um, any information that you want to share as far as contact. So this is a way for people to contact you later. So whether it's a phone number, an email address, um, whether you want to share your social media handles, a blog that you write, a website, you get the idea. Whatever it is and um, whatever you share, just know that it's, it's Green Chamber is encouraging people in the community to reach out to each other and connect. So I'm going to give you a few minutes, actually not even a few minutes, I'm going to give you 90 seconds to do that. And I do not... See. Hi, 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 I am here. There's Emma. <laughs> hi, everyone. So um, while, while well, let, me just, let me just tell everybody really quick, um, everybody, please type into the chat box your, your contact. And while you're doing that, we have one of our UNF interns. I'm sorry, I just let her into the chat room. Um, uh, Emma is going to share a 90 second, second presentation while you do your chat, while you do your uh, icebreaker. Go ahead, Emma. <laughs> Hi everyone, so while everyone is putting that into the chat, I wanted to share some green news in car history that is currently happening um, in Jacksonville and in cars all around the world. So, super interesting. Um, in 2021, 
Uh, there has been. Everybody, please mute if you can. I don't know who that is. I think Charles. Um, well, anyway, I was going to say sometime this year, BMW is showing the first all electric M badge car. Um, Jaguar Land Rover says that it's going to begin testing a hydrogen fuel cell prototype in 2021 or early 2022. Um, Mercedes plans to introduce 10 new electric cars in 2022, and Ford intends to start the production of a new electric car. Mazda is also planning to plug in hybrids, and by 2030, Volvo plans to sell only electric cars. <laughs> In Jacksonville, there's a total of 174 um, different plugins for electric cars. And all in all, I thought that was really interesting. Lots of different options and lots of ports in Jacksonville. So with that being said, um, yeah, I thought it was super exciting. With that being said, uh, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of our, um, yeah. Thank you, Emma. That was Emma Sheridan, our UNF intern. Some very cool information, and I think it kind of goes a little bit in line with uh, what Pete is going to speak about um, coming up right now. Pete, are you ready? I believe I am. All right. Well, the floor is yours. Okay. Well, thank you very much for inviting me, Christina. It's a pleasure to be a part of the Green oh. Chamber here, and uh, thank you all for joining in. Uh, we got a lot of customers here, so um, a lot of people are uh, already familiar with solar. Um, I think a lot of you know about A1A Solar. We've been around since 2010. We do residential and commercial solar electric and backup generation. We do a lot of batteries, power wall batteries. Um, we are a certified Tesla energy uh, installer, and uh, that includes panels, batteries, we're also a Generac dealer. So we really focus on probably about 80% of our work is residential and about 20% is commercial. Uh, our reach is about a two hour radius for residential from Jacksonville and uh, about a four hour radius uh, for a commercial project. Except if you go east, east, cause you get kind of wet when you go about a half an hour from there. Um, what I asked to cover today is kind of where we are in the industry in terms of um, the, the solar. Uh, we are in a very dynamic uh, period. Solar has always been very dynamic, um, but I, I guess you could put a squared or a cubed on it right now. We have many factors going, um, uh, all smashing together right now. The technology is increasing, particularly on the ed energy storage side. Um, Solar panels, to the most part, are a commodity right now, and the prices are very low. We've got very low interest rates at the moment right now, which makes it financing uh, very attractive for both residential and commercial. So, And we got the 26% tax credit extended another two years instead of dropping down to uh, uh, 22%. So that's all really paved a really good... Um, uh, road for solar moving for these next couple years right now. We're kind of hoping the Biden administration is going to put some additional incentives on there. Uh, I'm not sure what they're going to be, if any. I, I think uh, the federal level, they kind of bought the the 26% um, for two years. I'm hoping maybe they'll convert that to a tax grant so you don't need a tax load. So that's essentially where we're at right now. Um, for Jacksonville here, it's even a little bit better for customers who want um, energy storage, where JEA still has that $4,000 battery rebate if you put solar plus storage in. So we've had a really good uh, following and, and luck with that for the, the customers in that, that range. But outside of Jacksonville, there's virtually no other incentives other than the federal one that we currently have. Um, there's, uh, as you may be aware, there's a lot of utility scale solar going in right now, all over the country, uh, particularly in Florida. FPNL has been extremely, um, aggressive or forward or however you want to call it. Um, the whole Jinko manufacturing plant in Jacksonville, I think they're, I forget what the numbers are exactly. Like they want to produce somewhere in the order of 8 million solar panels over the next several years. Uh, that are essentially going to be um, part of FPL's uh, utility scale solar fleet, if, if you will. 
So uh, FPNL has been uh, very forward on that, and um, I, I support that 100%. Uh, on the policy side, that gets a little tricky right now, and there's some policy and work which I'm not fully up to speed on right now, uh, and I have to review. Uh, it, it can be concerning because a lot of the policies that come out are have have typically favored utility company side of the solar rather than the rooftop uh, solar um, game. I'm in the rooftop solar business where I, I sell and install panels to homeowners and business owners, uh, not utility companies. So we're, we're not necessarily on the same side of the table when it comes to solar policy, uh, typically at the state level on that. Um, so more to follow on that. And you really need to read to between the lines as to what some of these new proposed policies are favoring and, and not favoring. Um, in, in terms of the saleability of solar, it, it really does get better every year that I've been in this business now, gosh, 13, 14 years now. Um, but it, it, we still have a problem with old information um, being dated. People got a, an estimate maybe you know five, six, 10 years ago, and they decided, oh, it doesn't work, it's too expensive, it doesn't, the technology's not there, the economics aren't there. Well, I can tell you as a matter of fact, there is so much that has changed just in the last two years. Tesla Powerwall 2 uh, has been a complete game changer by itself. Um, all the other uh, equipment manufacturers are basically trying to play catch up with the value proposition of the Tesla Powerwall. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, there's a lot of investment money right now that is just waiting for solar investment, whether it's uh, residential or whether it's commercial and even leasing options for commercial. Uh, we're in a situation right now uh, for commercial that depending on a few uh, instances in terms of the type of um, billing and the utility, but you can almost choose uh, between a, ca a positive cash flow scenario and uh, equivalent or neutral cash flow, or if you want to pay it off sooner, you can have a negative cash flow scenario. And the same holds true with residential as well. But there is so much investment money that's on the sidelines right now. Most of the systems that we install right now are financed. And um, like Mosaic is one of the loans we use, service finance. There's about a, three or four more that we use typically. Uh, for zero down loans on solar. So all said and done right now, it, you don't need to have a big fat checkbook to get into solar. Um, there's usually a sweet spot kind of Goldilocks scenario for financing to get solar, whether it's residential or commercial. And that's, um, that's my job of my, my consultants to find that. So um, I think I kind of covered the high level. Why don't I um, do some Q&A now? Yep. Do you want me to, sorry, I think I may have missed your slides here. Um, I think you only had like three, um, but some of I these are really sorry. great slides. I wonder, Did, I, I think judging from the crowd here, um, does anybody not know the basics of solar and the environmental dividend and the financial benefit over time? Um, again, the carbon offset with solar is just tremendous, even for a small system. Um, one of the challenges we've had really with the newer homes are so energy efficient. Sometimes the electric bill is so small that putting even a small system, it's not necessarily offsetting enough uh, dollar amount of electricity to make the um, economics favorable. But now with the, the increase in electric vehicles, that bumps up the consumption of the house with the EV, and then we're pushing the consumption of the house that makes it um, a viable economic scenario with the solar on the house plus the EV, even if the electric bill is only 60 or 70 or $80 a month. So as those trends increase, uh, so should um, uh, the solar on that. Um, you know, the, the environmental aspect of it is, is tremendous. Uh, the economic aspect over time is tremendous and even the um, uh, value to the home on that. Uh, it, it's really a win-win-win scenario on that. But again, our biggest challenge is uh, as, a, as an installer is getting people uh, educated on these. So 
Okay, that kind of covers the gist of the slides okay. um, on that, so. Excellent. Well, we can definitely open up to uh, go into our discussion time uh, and we can go back to any of those slides if, if questions arise with any of them. Uh, so now we're gonna open up to our, um, we don't like to call it Q&A session, although it turns into a Q&A. This is your chance to talk, uh, to ask questions to the speaker, but this is also your chance, and this, since this is a Green Chamber meeting, um, can we like to have discussion. We like to ha hear from the audience their, uh, their thoughts and their ideas on this topic. Uh, so, and I'm sure Pete would really appreciate some discussion, um, but who wants to, ask the first question. You can either, I see people typing in the chat box. Let me check it here. Uh, and then you can also raise your hand uh, or unmute yourself to ask a question. So, so uh, this is David. Uh, Pete, uh, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. Um, Pete, you mentioned batteries. Can you, can, you, um, can you talk about whether people should get batteries or not get batteries if it's on residential? I know you've talked about it both ways. Yeah, well, you know, that comes part of the needs of analysis. In general, it depends on what the goals are. If people want grid down capability, we're, we're left with the um, choice between a standby generator, uh, say a 22 kW Generac, I installed tons and tons of those, or a, a energy storage battery coupled with the solar. So the, the price of the batteries obviously is going to increase the cost of the system um, somewhat substantially, but, um, you know, even when you look at a financial scenario, uh, even if you get a 18 to 20 year payback, um, solar plus batteries, you still get a payback. And because the cost of batteries have come down so much, you can actually get a payback with batteries where in previous years, forget about it, it wasn't even, it wasn't even an option. So it really comes down to what the customer wants. Um, we are moving toward probably about half the systems that I sell have batteries with them. If somebody really doesn't care about grid down or self-consumption, all they want is economics and uh, environmental benefit, then it's solar without the batteries. If people want self-consumption to be extra green uh, and have that grid down um, uh, safety and security, uh, then we're talking batteries. Great. Um, Pete, I'm trying to watch the chat box for you and I'll try to read these as they come in. Um, we had a question about the Tesla power walls um, and you talked a little bit about that. Um, Vicki, can you please tell us if, we're, if uh, Pete needs to go into more detail with that? I'm gonna skip to the next question, which is um, Julie Edwards is asking, we need a new roof. Uh, and she says, I understand there's a great time, that it is a great time to in investigate solar. Um, but she wants to know if you know of any roofers. Um, we work uh, with Reliant Roofing. Uh, they're kind of a, a strategic partner of ours and they say, have the same business philosophy as we do. High quality work, stand behind everything, um, fair market price. So uh, they use us for the solar work and, and we refer them for the roofing work. And it is a good time to get them both done together. Uh, because you're already making the CapEx on the roof. You might as well put the solar in there. Uh, mm -hmm. And a lot of people bundle the financing in both of them at the same time. That makes for an ideal cash flow scenario. Um, great, thank you. And then another question, we're getting a lot in the chat box. Um, um, adding a power wall explanation, or to add to the power wall explanation, um, can you please explain the JEA battery program um, and I believe that there's a few, more than one battery program. Um, if you, Pete, could maybe go into some of those and any of the discounts that you get or maybe discounts that you might not get um, based on different companies. I don't know if you know all the utilities. I think different utilities have different programs, right? Can you maybe explain some of the yeah. ones in North Florida that um, you know? Okay, well, if, if you're interested in energy storage for a battery, whether it's Tesla or another battery that's on the market, um, right now, the only direct incentive for that uh, uh, regionally is the JEA program. It's a battery rebate. It's worth $4,000. And after the install, uh, we fill out all the paperwork and everything like that. And you get a check in the mail. And um, that, that is separate from the 26% tax credit. 
uh, other utility companies, um, you know, net metering is pretty much going to be going away. Um, writings on the wall, big utility company policies. Uh, it, it's going to be net metering is is going to be very difficult to save. Unfortunately, it'd be the best thing for solar growth, uh, but there's there's a lot of big money, big utility interests that's um, uh, chipping away at it slowly but surely. So um, when utility companies change their their uh, metering policies, whether it's base rate, time of use, even uh, experimenting with demand charges, you really need that battery if you want to get the economic return to have that ability to save your solar energy and use it to off, off, offset more expensive electricity and or demand charges. So I, I think we got a, I got a couple customer or two that may want to weigh in on self-consumption and how that works. But, but right now, JEA does not have net metering. FPNL does because they're mandated by, mandated by law. We work with about a dozen different utility companies uh, between North, in North, Northeast Florida and South uh, Georgia. There's a lot of utility companies and some of them have, um, uh, the economics can be really good and sometimes the economics can be really bad. That's why you need to have a credentialed honest to goodness, solar evaluation for uh, how the numbers work out for you from both the design and economic standpoint. Yep, great. Um, we do have some more questions in the chat, but Vicki has her hand up. Vicki, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask Peter, uh, on the commercial side, are there any hospitality related um, businesses or companies that you have worked with, um, like a hotel, uh, a hospitality industry supplier? Um, I'll have to check on that. Uh, we've done produce distribution, a lot of logistics, um, some medical offices, veterinary offices. I'm losing track of, of the ones. Um, well, we have a couple of, uh, we, we have several new hotels on the horizon, so I would hope that maybe you could approach them for uh, an opportunity like this. Absolutely. And uh, I have a, a commercial solar uh, consultant, uh, she specializes in this, and we even have partnerships with various funding ent entities for either capital lease and or, or loan options. And the nice thing about on the commercial side, providing they have the tax load, is you get not only the 26% tax credit, but you get the accelerated depreciation. So the economics can be incredibly good for the commercial side. But uh, we need a, a longer-term minded customer on that, for-profit, typically owner-occupied uh, on that. So that's where the consultant um, uh, comes in. Yeah, we fig we've uh, just finished several um, uh, commercial projects and uh, the, the numbers are really good on that, but we need right. to have some interest from the owners of that and go through the process of, of the evaluation. Vicki, I love your train of thought there and um, I'd be happy to connect with you with um, Pete or Shelly after the after this meeting and maybe a connection from you um, to them, uh, you know, connecting them to the, any of the contacts that you might know in that hotel industry with them coming up um, would help. Yeah, um, I'm sure to do that. Great. Let's, let's um, do it. <laughs> great. Yeah, big, um, big flat roofs are, are great for solar. Um, Non-penetrating ballast. Uh, we've done lots of them. They're, they're straightforward, simple projects. Um, it, it's tough to get through the evaluation and make the, uh, find that Goldilocks uh, scenario of the system size and the right financing tool to make positive cash flow. Um, I see Ashante has her hand up, but before we go to Ashante, um, we had a, a question come in from Chef Chris Brown um, um, in the chat and she wants to know, she said, I'm, I'm curious about out of pocket average costs. Uh, and Pete, I know that's hard to do, but anything you can give us for solar installed for a 27,000, uh, 2,700 square foot house. You know, uh, I would say 80 plus percent of our customers finance it uh, because it is a 35 year capital investment and front loading, just like buying a house, few people pay cash for a house or a car. It's in that same cap X. Um, since most people finance it, um, a lot of times it's very little money down or zero down uh, depending on the loan there. Uh, we do get cash customers on residential and even uh, the commercial side, depending on what they want to do. 
Um, for the prices come down for a small home and a small system, even before the tax credit, we're well below twenty thousand dollars. I mean, I've got some smaller systems going in in the fifteen thousand dollar range. Take twenty six percent off that. So the cap X, even for a cash out small system, is not is is not um, monumental like it was. You know, when I got in the business, where a five kW was forty thousand dollars. So that's that's great news. Um, Ashante, make sure you unmute. Hi, Pete. Hi. It's Ashante. Um, hello, everyone. It's been a while since we spoke, Pete. Um, but my question slash statement is, there was a study that came out um, a few years ago that determined that Jacksonville was one of the cities in Florida that had a pretty high energy burden, um, which means that um, some people spent more money on their household budgets for um, utility expenses. Um, my question to you is, have you worked with any um, equitable like solar co-ops or any initiatives to assist um, or have any ideas about how we can outreach to communities that could really benefit from solar um, in that sense? Thank you. Uh, yes, we have. We've been involved in um, community solar, a co-op actually for St. John's County. And um, we got a lot of customers from that. It was kind of like a, it was almost a, kind of a group buying type experience where it was sort of flat rate. Um, uh, it, sometimes these can be difficult uh, because it, it tends to commoditize solar where the solar contractors kind of assume a lot of risk because they don't know what kind of volume they're gonna get and they commit to a low price. So if you don't get those economies of scale, um, uh, like for us, for the St. John's County program, they estimated we'd have twice the number of customers we did. So, you know, it ended up being um, not a great thing for A1A Solar, but it was a fantastic thing for the customers of the co-op. Um, so it does drive the price down, but there's, there's other community programs that are out there. Um, you know, it, how it gets funded, there has to be a funding mechanism in there somehow. And the panels need to go on some structure at some point. And there, there needs to be, uh, you know, some level of monitoring and maintenance to the system as well. So, uh, you know, there are more things coming out. In fact, um, uh, we're involved with a, a development. Uh, it's, it's called Solar Haven, where it's an entire development that's basically, it's a solar development. It's not an option. It just puts solar on every single building, residential and commercial. So it just makes sense when you bake it into everything from both an environmental standpoint and a uh, economic standpoint. But on the retrofit side, again, not every home is gonna be a good candidate. Not every person is gonna be a good uh, uh, solar candidate as well. So these are some of the challenges that we're gonna have as an industry and for people that wanna partake in solar. Um, Pete, I'll add to that. Um, we only have a few minutes left, and I think maybe this is a good time for us, to, for me, to um, mention our solar collective that we have through the Green Chamber. Um, if anybody has not heard of it, um, we have a link on our website under benefits, uh, and soon to be on our homepage. But um, it's we have created a program called a solar collective, and what it allows us to do is we have the Green Chamber has. A relationship with energy coaches that we have brought on um, that we know are um, of high quality and expertise. So these energy coaches are matched with anybody in the public. This is Ashante, this is a free program to anyone in the public. Uh, you do not have to be a Green Chamber member. Uh, you do not have to be a business. This could be for business or residential. You would fill out our solar collective questionnaire, which is again on our website. And we would match you, the Green Chamber would match you with a energy coach. That energy coach would work with you to do all kinds of things like a roof check. Um, they would do an energy audit and help you get your house energy efficient before doing solar to make sure you're getting the, uh, uh, the best cost. They would also run through the financials with you. So they would walk through what those tax credits are, what your current energy bill is, what you can expect to pay. And they even have relationships with people that have um, green loans or uh, lending programs for uh, adding solar. And then the uh, energy coach would match you with a solar company or a solar installer that they thought was a, a good fit. 
Uh, and through that program, there are discounts offered. So um, it's, it's not the same as a co-op where a whole neighborhood goes and gets a, an XYZ price. Um, but there is, a, there, there is an incentive for the program, um, or a, I'm sorry, a discount for the program, and also you're hooked up with an energy coach. And again, all of that through the Green Chamber is free. Not the solar panels, the solar panels you have to pay for, but the program to see if solar is a good fit um, is the energy coach itself is a, is a, um, a free program. Uh, and through that, there is a discount. Yeah, it's a great program. Check it out on our website. It's something that we're going to be launching. More. I mean, it's already launched, but we're going to be advertising it uh, more in the future. Uh, but it is ready to go, and we've had people already already uh, utilize this program, so it's great. And with that, um, I'm looking at my clock. Time flew. Pete, your topic was amazing. Um, we might have to have you on again for round two. It's already 2.31, so in the interest of time, um, everybody, please remember that this was recorded and it will be shown on our YouTube channel. Also, um, follow up with everybody that you might want to uh, network with. In our, remember, everybody's contact is in the uh, chat box. And with that, um, as I am saying goodbye, um, if everybody could think about maybe what your Tuesday takeaway would be, if you feel comfortable, share it in the chat box. And Pete, can you, um, as we all say goodbye, can you please tell us what you thought your Tuesday takeaway was from our discussion today? Well, um, it's great to see uh, customers here and people I haven't seen in a little while. And um, good to be uh, re-engaged again with the uh, Green Chamber. Thank you. It's great to see everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you, Pete. That was great. Oh, you're, you're quite welcome. Enjoyed it. Have a good week. Bye. Okay. Christina. Yes. Uh, okay, you're still here. Let, let's connect this afternoon with Pete or, or uh, just you and I or whatever to talk a little bit more about this. Okay, that's, yeah, I think the salesperson he was talking about, she was on the call. Her name was okay. Shelly. Um, what I'll probably do, I'll, I'll CC Shelly and Pete in an email and connect you. And um, if we want to set up a call, we can, we can do it that way. That sounds great. I'm pretty much open the rest of the afternoon. Um, do you actually, do you mind if I call you, can you actually, can you call me right now? I'm going to type my phone number in your, do you have five minutes to chat about yes. something different? Yes. Okay. I have about 15, 20 minutes before I have another meeting coming up here, but, um, I want to talk to you about something that we launched for our events. Okay, great. Okay. All right. I'm going to sign off. Bye everybody. And Vicki, I'll talk with you in a second. <laughs> Righto. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks. Bye. Three, two, two, seven.